CBSE announces Class 12 Term 1 Results 2022. Directorate of Education revises admission schedule of entry-level seats for EWS and CWSN categories. LPSC conducts RAS mains exams in all divisional and district headquarters. Jamia Millia Islamia Vice Chancellor Professor Najma Akhtar to be conferred with Padmashri today. Exam special buses to operate for UP Board 2022 examinees in all districts. IIT Madras and US University develop deep learning algorithms to enhance 3D effects in phone videos. Delhi High Court seeks response of government to plea on school building lying unutilized since 2011. Good afternoon and a warm welcome. You're watching Education News Network, where we get you the latest developments in education at the top of the sun. This is Nitya reporting from ENN and the daily stories are CBSE released the Class 12 Term 1 results on Saturday evening. Just like Class 10 results, these won't be accessible directly to students. The Central Board has sent theory marks for Term 1 to schools, with which principals and teachers can access through their Shiksha login ID. There is no ban from CBSE's side to share these marks with students. CBSC is officially not calling this results because that will comprise the total marks of Term 1, Term 2 and practicals and internals. Also, the weightage of both terms is yet to be decided. Hence, the board is simply referring to these marks as performance so that schools can have an idea of how their students have fared. A senior CBSC official said CBSC has started sending performance of Class 12 students to schools. Students can contact their respective schools. Students can contact their school and get to know their Term 1 theory marks. Details of the redressal system and protocols are expected to be released later today. The Directorate of Education has revised the admission schedule of the entry-level seats for the economically weaker section or disadvantaged category and children with special needs categories. Now the online registration process will begin from March 29. The last day for filling the admission form will be April 12th and the first draw of lots will be held on April 19th. As per Section 121C of the Right to Education Act 2009, 25% of seats in private schools are reserved for these categories. Out of the 25%, 22% is for EWS or DG and 3% for CWSN. For the 2021 to 2022 academic session, the DOE had to invite fresh applications and conduct a draw of lots after the deadline of December 31st, following the direction of Delhi High Court. For the 2022 to 2023 academic session, the government is yet to release the details of the seats. The DOE has given time till March 22nd to the private schools to submit written representation in case of any discrepancies with regard to the entry level EWS, DG, and CWSN vacancies, GPS coordinates, and others. Admissions under the special categories take place at around 2,000 private schools in Delhi. The Rajasthan Public Service Commission will conduct the RAS main examination on March 20th and 21st in all divisional and district headquarters. There are 113 centres in the state in which 20,371 candidates will appear for the examination. The examination will be held in two sessions from 9am to 12 and 2pm to 5pm. The examination was scheduled to be held in February, but Rajasthan High Court stayed the examination and later the Supreme Court gave its nod to conduct it. Secretary of RPSC HL Atal said that a control room has been started in the RPSC. Similar control rooms have been started in all eight divisional and district headquarters. The control rooms are with the district administrators of Ajmer, Bharatpur, Bikaner, Jaipur, Jodhpur, Kota and Udaipur. Metal detectors will be used to check students prior to the examination. There will be video recording in every examination centre and for the first time two videographers are deputed in every examination centre by the RPSC. There will be two invigilators in every examination hall to control the examination activity and appointment of invigilators has been done by random method. There will also be flying squads on every five to six examination centres in which officials from police, education department and administrative department will be kept. There will also be observers separately to keep vigil on examination process in every centre. Every centre will have security of state police and distribution of question papers as well as collecting answer sheets from centres will be under strict police security and observation. The RPSC said that without any photo identity card, no candidates will be allowed to enter the examination centre. The candidate has to carry original identity card as well as one passport size photograph with them before entering the examination centre.
The Vice Chancellor of Jamia Millia Islamia, Professor Najma Akhtar, will receive Padma Shri, the fourth highest civilian award of the country, from the President of India, Ramnath Kovind, at a ceremony to be held at the Darbar Hall of the Rashtrapati Bhavan today. The Government of India selected her for the award because of her exemplary contribution in the field of literature and education. Professor Akhtar has the distinction of being the first woman Vice Chancellor of JMI. Also, the varsity received A++ accreditation from the National Accreditation and Assessment Council under her supervision in December 2021. She is widely recognized as a leading educationist for having brought transformation in the delivery of quality education in premier educational institutions of the country. Professor Akhtar also led JMI to bag the sixth rank in the National Institutional Ranking Framework of the Ministry of Education, GOI. Under her leadership, the university achieved outstanding performance by securing a 95.23% score amongst all central universities in a performance evaluation done by the Ministry of Education for the year 2019 to 2020. In order to ensure smooth transportation of UP board students during their exams that are slated to commence from March 24th, the state government has ordered the Uttar Pradesh State Road Transport Corporation, that is UPSRTC, to operate examination special buses before and after the exams across the state for the convenience of class 10 and class 12 students, say state education department officials, adding that instructions in this regard were given during a video conference organized to review UP board examination preparations by State Chief Secretary Durga Shankar Mishra recently. The state government has also ordered that the officials concerned for public transport also ensure smooth arrangements for commuting of the students to the examination centers during the board exams. To make sure that the students wishing to avail the services do not face any problems, the state government has directed officials to sensitize transport corporation personnel and those working in the public transport system about the government's decision. Researchers at the Indian Institute of Technology, Madras, and the US-based Northwestern University have developed AI-powered algorithms that can greatly enhance the depth, perception, and 3D effects in videos shot using smartphone cameras. According to officials, these algorithms aim to prevent mobile phone images from being flat and impart a realistic 3D feel. A crucial advantage of the algorithm developed is that it eliminates the need for fancy equipment or an array of lenses to capture videos with depth. Kaushik Mitra, Assistant Professor at Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Madras, said it is a common complaint, especially amongst amateur and professional photographers, that photographs and videos shot using smartphone cameras have a flat two-dimensional look. Apart from the flat look, some 3D features such as the bouquet effect, the aesthetic blurring of the background that are easy with the DSLR camera, are challenging in smartphone cameras. While a few mid- and high-end smartphone cameras are now programmed to incorporate such effects in still photographs, especially in portrait mode, it is not yet possible to render them in videos captured using smartphones. Delhi High Court has sought the Delhi government's response on a plea by an NGO seeking to make functional a government school which was constructed and developed back in 2011-2012 and is lying unutilized. A bench of acting Chief Justice Vipin Sanghi and Justice Naveen Chabla issued a notice and sought the response of the Delhi government and Directorate of Education on the petition which also sought to take action against the official who are answerable for their lackadaisical attitude and dereliction of duties. The High Court listed the matter for further hearing on March 29th. The petition by NGO Laksha submitted that a full-fledged school, Rajkia Uchma Dhimik Balika Vidyale, was constructed and developed in 2011-2012 and lying unutilized in a poor condition. The NGO through its president claimed that anti-social elements are stealing articles, including iron gates, windows, water taps and wash basins from the building and consuming alcohol and other contraband substances there. Advocate Sanjay Bhadwaj, appearing for the NGO, said the petitioner sought information from DOE under RTI regarding the school building, and the authorities responded that the building has not been handed over to them. However, the department was mute with regard to information about the reason for non-operation of the building. It said the school building was constructed with funds of the exchequer, and if the petition is allowed, it will benefit students and society, the plea said. The school building was inaugurated by a member of parliament and other higher officials of DOE in 2014, it said. That's all for today. Thank you for watching Education News Network. For more such videos, do log on to our website, theenn.com. And don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. Signing off, this is Nitya.